So, we've got a trailer, we've got an article, we've got screenshots of the new Need for Speed. It has been teased recently with some shots from Vegas. We know it's in Vegas that the map's going to be called Fortune Valley. We've got tons of stuff in the trailer and before I ramble on anymore, we'll just jump straight into the trailer and I'll break down all the little bits of it. If you want to see the full trailer, I'll link it in the description um, to the Need for Speed YouTube channel. I'm just going to be breaking it down in this one, telling you guys some of the information. I have seen the game, I have played it, I have been to Gothenburg where Ghost Games is based. Um, I have played the game. Um, I'm going to try and tell you as much as I can without obviously trying to get sued by EA. I can't tell you everything, but I'll try and tell you as much as I can based on the information we've got in the article and in the trailer. So, let's jump straight into it. Straight off, first shot, we get to see a truck plowing through some car. Obviously, something bad's going down. We've got an explosion, and then we've got an RTR flying through. So, a Ford Mustang RTR. This was one of the flagship cars in the original teaser trailer for the for Need for Speed 2015. It's coming back, it looks pretty similar, but it's got some stripes and some different stuff on it. And it's called Need for Speed Payback. It was just recently leaked just before this, this trailer's gone up. And obviously it's in the name, it's about getting someone back for something they've done to you, as you'll find out in the commentary from the trailer. And it's coming out November 10th, 2017. So, jumping straight into it again. We were a crew. And she left us with nothing. You can hear it says we, we were a crew and you left us with nothing. So this is pretty much the premise of the story. It looks very fast and furious. We've got a car loaded onto a trailer. They've got to try and steal this car, it looks like. And they've got to jump on the trailer and stuff like that. Reminds me of a scene from Fast and Furious 4 where Letty jumps off of Dom's car, jumps on top of the trailer. And she unhooks those fuel containers and they drive off with the trucks turning around and spinning off and driving off and all that sort of stuff. Looks very fast and furious. The whole idea of the story where they're getting someone back for betraying it, sort of like Dom with Brian, he was a cop, betrayed Dom and that sort of stuff. Loving the way it's going. I've never seen an Eva Speed or any racing game for that matter go in this sort of direction. And it's of course CGI. There's no live action or anything like that. It's not so it's obviously there's a lot more freedom to play with. That was one of my big complaints with the old Need for Speed. The campaign wasn't enticing enough. It was all fake and there was no antagonizers. Clearly there's some antagonizers now as well where you've got someone to fight. Um, obviously they've, they've done something bad to you and you've got to go and take them down. And it says in the article that there's some sort of like, it's like a, a cartel or some sort of crime family um, called The House. And you've got to bring down The House, pay them like get payback for what they've done to you and this person who is in your crew that's now betrayed you. Anyway, so without further ado, we'll jump back into the trailer, see all the different stuff that we can get from it. So if we just go back a little bit, um, just before this Koenigsegg Regera is loaded onto this trailer, we can see we've got just a scene of carnage. Clearly this is Vegas as well. We can see we've got deserty areas. We've got like a, a highway with, with sand like covered all over it. There's cars everywhere and explosions. So clearly this is going to be an explosive need for speed. Stuff's going to go down. There's going to be tons of action. An amazing way to take a racing game. It's just like Fast and Furious. There's tons of action. Hopefully it's going to be coupled with some good races, taking what Fast and Furious has lost and bringing it into a game. Just combining those two, that idea in itself is just amazing. So we've got this Regera loaded onto a trailer and obviously this group that's going against you is quite high tech. This this group that you're trying to take down, whereas you're pretty ghetto, you've just got like a tuned skyline. I think the guy Tyler Morgan, who is the main character in this, who but he says we're going to end this and this guy here I believe is Tyler Morgan. So the guy on the left of this Mustang GT RTR. And also we've got another female character here. Um, she hasn't got her name yet, but obviously she's a key player in the campaign. We've got this truck going past. Obviously, this is some sort of big mission. Whether all the missions are going to be like this or if it's going to be like heist where you've got to prepare for them, maybe you've got to do some races, collect some things so that you can actually pull off these sort of big heists because obviously they're stealing this Regera from this trailer. And might I say, this game looks so sick. Look at the graphics. And of course, I forgot to say it's daytime as well. We've got a day and night cycle. We'll see a time lapse of that in a minute. And the RTR is similar to the one that we saw in the Need for Speed 2015 trailer, but you can see we've got dust and dirt all over the car, so the dirt mapping on the cars is going to be pretty intense. The PBR looks great. I've not seen any rain yet. Whether we're going to see rain again, I don't know. We can see it blasting down the highway. The sounds are amazing. Whether this is actual in-game footage, I'm not sure if it actually mentions it or not. But obviously, we've got this high-tech trailer blasting down the highway, and then we go into a tunnel, and then carnage ensues. Something much bigger going on here. 
So moving on in the trailer, notice the commentary. She says there's something bigger going on here and there's a bigger picture to whatever they're doing. And um, so hopefully the campaign is going to be interested in that way. I think the big point to take from this trailer is pretty much a campaign trailer, just showing off the basics of the game, the cars and the premise and all that sort of stuff. And um, we can see we've got a Liberty Walk Challenger, it's, it looks like, but it's, it's sort of like a lifted off-road version. We've got 1552 Tarmacs on it, the Liberty Walk wire body, and also we've got like bull bars on the front. And this reminds me a lot of sort of Letty's um, Challenger that we saw, and I think it was Fast and Furious 7, um, where obviously they jump out the plane, they parachute down, and they just go and smash stuff up with those like aggressive, like off-road versions of those cars. Um, so obviously we're going to get different classes of cars now as well. We're going to get drift, off-road, um, I think it was runner, and another one in the article it said, I'll just check it now. So the five different classes will get a race, drift, off-road, drag, and runner. So obviously this trailer shows off those different styles. What the Mustang is, I'm not too sure. Maybe it's runner, maybe it's just race, I'm not too sure. But we can see something mad going on. So she's jumping from the car to this trailer while it's on the move. Obviously a car smashes in between them. Whether you'll get to control these characters while they're actually jumping onto stuff and doing things in these missions, that'd be pretty intense. Whether we'll be able to walk around in Need for Speed, I hope so, that'd be pretty cool. That was something I requested in my actual discussion video about Need for Speed 2017. That would be insane walking around car meets and stuff like that. But even still, if you were just driving the car and she just had to jump to the trailer, that would still be pretty sick. We can see we've got slow motion shots. We've got an X5 flying through the air. Now, I'd love to see crashes and stuff like that become a big thing in Need for Speed. Um, I've mentioned it in my discussion video where, the, where we should not have as many barriers, fly off cliffs, have things happening in slow motion. That would be pretty intense. And we can see we've got a nice shot of Vegas here. We've got the Space Needle or I can't remember what it's actually called, um, but it looks pretty good. We've got daytime, we've got the sun bearing down on the city. It just looks so good. We've got the X5 in the sunset shot and we've got this sort of like mad casino there. Um, I'm not too sure what that building is in real life. And the 350Z, we see this for the first time in the trailer. It's got some LED lights on the back. Um, it's got a big wing. It just looks immense. I, it looks so good. We've got a diffuser on it. Oh, man. It, I, you can just see how excited I am for this. Um, we've also got an event at all. There's no body kits or anything on it. I believe there was a Liberty Walk kit for it in Need for Speed 2015. Hopefully, that does come back. But this is just sort of showing, like, the style. If you, if you just want a classy supercar look, Maybe you're into that Dominion style where you just have a nice classy supercar and you just drive it around on the streets. You can do that if you want to. It looks sick in daytime as well. Um, and then, of course, we've got the day and nighttime cycle. So we can see it going through all the cycles of the day. We've got a 1957 Chevy Bel Air on the left, which is a lifted off-road version of that car. So we, hopefully we can do some insane stuff to those. Whether you'll be able to modify these cars from just on the spot where you just turn them into an off-road car gradually by changing the suspension and stuff i doubt that's going to work because i know the way gta works is you have to select a custom vehicle and then it swaps it to another model simply because of all the different handling issues and stuff that you would get for it and especially the customization as well i imagine some of the chassis components and stuff will be completely different so i doubt that you're just going to be able to turn it from a drift car into an off-road car um, just by naturally customizing it it'll be a preset selection that's at least what I think. We've got an R34 Skyline, highly modified with a V-Spec Z-Tune fender on the front. We saw this stuff in Need for Speed 2015. The only major customization I can see different from 2015 is this 1957 Chevy Bel Air. And we've got a murdered out. It looks like an M2 on the right there as well. And again, note the environment. We've got, they're on an off-road section, so they're just sitting off-road. Whether it's going to be expanded a lot now as well, so you're not just restricted on roads, there's not going to be barriers everywhere, whether you can just drive off the road, run over all the dirt and stuff like that, like in Horizon maybe. Not sure how I feel about Need for Speed going in that direction, but at the end of the day, we'll have to play the game, see what it's like when it comes to driving off-road and stuff like that. And you can see we've got a run-down 240Z at the side of the road, or just on an off-road section. An artist can turn any scrap into a supercar. And notice the commentary, he says we can turn any scrap into a supercar. So obviously you might be able to find these like sort of like barn finds in Horizon where you find them and you do them up. Um, but obviously this 240 has been turned into a drag car, which is another one of the classes. You can see it's got massive meaty tires, it's, it's got a wheelie bar, it's got a drag wing. You'd never think of doing that to a 240. And notice as well just the level of detail on these characters in the C like the, the CGR is intense. Hopefully it's not like Mass Effect. I doubt it because I, 
obviously it's just looks just like a scripted campaign at least i believe so there's not going to be different scenarios at least i don't think so hopefully the cgi and the talking everything's going to be great and then we can see these are our three main characters so we've got tyler morgan and these two other characters which haven't been named yet um obviously they've got their own styles and different things that they do we've got a car in the background there i believe it's a gt86 looks like with a carbon a sabon carbon hood um, can't see a wide body on it but we've got a pagani huara as well so obviously a lot of supercars are coming into this game i'm not too much of a fan of supercars but it doesn't seem like a prominent feature it's not like fast and furious where it's saying oh supercar 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 it's got a nice variety of cars got off-road cars drifting street racing cars we've got murdered out bms a huge variety of cars and we can see the 1957 chevy bel air ripping it off road and there's some really sketchy terrain so whether you'll be able to go into some lifted high trucks and just go over all these rocks slowly if you're into off road and like that we own these streets tyler so we've got this woman who's saying we own these streets tyler and she's on the phone so maybe she's talking to tyler this character that you play and this is going to be the antagonizer that you face that you've got to bring down and she's sort of like the woman working for the house as it might seem and she's got obviously a high-end she's standing i think it's a hawaii or something else i'm not too sure i can't make out what that car is um but obviously she is coming to some nice um fortune oh, it sort of makes sense it's fortune valley she's she's taking advantage of her mates and, and tyler's crew she's taking all this money and you've got to try and take her down because you're you're getting payback perfect name for it um it didn't sound right the first time i heard it but it sort of makes sense now um, and as we can see, we've got a nighttime shot in the city. The city looks amazing. We've got tons of lights. It's going to be sick for photos and cinematics. I know that for sure for any of you photographers and videographers out there. Um, I wouldn't say we can take too much in terms of handling away from this. Obviously, I think it's sort of like a pre-rendered sort of trailer. It's not entirely gameplay. Um, at least that's what I would say. Um, obviously, we've got slow motion crashes again. Looks intense. And the house always wins. And it says the house always wins so that's obviously the woman again saying that look we own you you can't take us down this sort of stuff so she's going to be antagonizing you i like that it's sort of like the old need for speed underground where you had eddie who was like antagonizing you all the way through and he got to the end you beat him in a race and it was it just felt good you got his car and stuff like that so hopefully there's going to be something similar like that where we get to the end and we just get to kick our ass well, not tonight it didn't and then we've got tyler said well not tonight it didn't so obviously you're going to be there's going to be this intense war going on. You and your your pretty much ghetto crew. You've got your crew back together and you're facing these guys. We've got the M2. We've got the Chevy Bel Air and the R34 running from police. So obviously police are back in this. They're going to be back a lot more intense. So in the article it actually says the return of intense cop chases means the stakes have, have never been higher. With helicopters and rhinos in the arsenal, you're going to have to push yourself and your car to the limit if you're going to outrun and get away from the local PD. One thing is for sure, they certainly won't go easy on you. So cops have been ramped up for this. They're not going to be really easy like they were in Need for Speed 2015. They were basically crap in Need for Speed 2015. Um, so they're coming back with a bang in this one, which I'm looking forward to. Hopefully they're not too annoying, say if you're going free mode and they're just there all the time. So they're just annoying you and your mates. The cops, the cop cars look a bit more high end this time. They're not just cruisers. They look like Dodge Chargers, it seems like. We've also got that 240 going up against a Mustang and this Mustang looks insane. So this looks like a drag one, but we can also see we've got exhausts that are popping out from behind the wheels inside the fenders with a titanium tip on it it's pulling a wheelie might i say it just looks insane pulling wheelies and drag cars hopefully that's a prominent thing and it's not just something they've shown in the trailer it's actually a part of the gameplay we've got the cars drifting around a corner and we've got i think it's a porsche panamera turbo so that's the four door longer porsche i don't believe that was in 2015 that'll be pretty interesting to see in the game whether we'll be able to, how much we'll be able to customize these high-end cars um i don't believe it'll be too much um, but I'm hoping for like the Huracan, the Liberty Walk and maybe a Ferrari 458 to have a lib like a wide body on it and stuff. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Got the Chevy Bel Air in an off-road location, which looks like sunrise or sunset. And we can see a mountain in the distance. Hopefully, we can go that far and we can go up that into that sort of terrainy area with some like canyon roads. And it does actually say in the article, Fortune Valley is your action-packed playground. Race through the glamorous and gritty districts of Silver Rock City. So this is going to be like the Vegas city that we know. Tear up the Arid Liberty Desert, drift your way up Mount Providence, so that might be that mountain that we've just seen in the distance, and defy deadly drops all over Silver Canyon, whatever you're in the mood for. Fortune Valley has it all. So deadly drops as well, this was something that I asked for 
in my discussion video where we won't have barriers and canyon roads. Maybe we can fall off the track and it'll go into slow motion. If we're in a race and we'll see someone just like wreck and stuff, that'll be pretty cool. So hopefully that's going to be a thing and we'll just be able to smash through, either smash through barriers or there'll be no barriers on these sort of canyon roads. That'll be pretty interesting. So moving on, we've also got a BMW M3 with a rocket bunny kit. This wasn't in um need for speed 2015 i don't believe at least a rocket bunny kit wasn't i know the m3 gtr kit was i believe it was i believe the m3 gtr kit was in need for speed 2015 um but this is a rocket bunny kit got an r34 going through like it's either some sort of underground car park or a tunnel with some sick lighting um, and obviously this is Tyler's car, you can see it's Tyler's plate. So this is going to be the main guy that you play. Whether you'll be able to play these other characters, because um, obviously it shows all three of them, or whether they're just going to be helping you out in missions, I'm not too sure. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And as we get to the end of the trailer, we've got the release date again, November 10th, 2017. And you can pre-order it. I'm going to be pre-ordering this straight away. Um, oh, I'm just, I'm so excited. I cannot wait for this. And by the way, I am going to be going to EA Play. I am going to be capturing from EA Play because he will have it playable there, which is in less than a week. I'm so excited and uh, I'm going to be streaming on Twitch as well. So I'll leave that linked in the description. I am sorry. I'm just, I'm too hyped. Um, this, this breakdown might have been pretty bad. I do apologize. But let's get on to the article. We've also got some other screenshots as well. And we'll go through some more of the specifics. So, at the start of the article, it says, The smell of burnt rubber lingers through the streets, a remnant of the activities that were carried out during the early hours of the morning. But the darkness of night now gives way to the light of day as Silver Rocks begins to spark into life as day breaks across the entire Fortune Valley region. So, obviously, this is talking about the day and night cycle, something a lot of you guys asked for from Leafsby 2015. It says, Need for Speed Pay Playback has a single-player campaign that follows the exploits of former street racer Tyler Morgan after being double-crossed and forced into exile. So this confirms that, obviously, we've got an antagonizer who's betrayed him, and now I've got to go and pay... This is what it's all about. We've got to go and pay them back. Tyler must rebuild his crew, win an impossible race, and bring down the house. The cartel that has a grip over the city's casinos, criminals, and cops. So, obviously, it's going to be pretty intense. It's going to be sort of like Fast and Furious. We've got the bigger guys, you and your crew, you're a bit more ghetto. You've got to go and take down this big house that are just pretty much running the city, which is going to be insane. I'm loving the premise of the story. Whether this will be co-op, maybe these extra characters are going to be something your mates can jump into and help you complete the campaign. That would be pretty interesting. And it says it also won't be Need for Speed about killer cars. The big question is, what sort of ride do you want? Cars and Need for Speed payback come in one of five classes: race, drift, off-road, drag, and runner. Whatever your goal, whatever your goal, you're going to want the right car for the job. And it shows a screenshot of a rundown Bel Air next to a done-up Bel Air. So maybe you'll be able to find these cars and do them up into whatever you like, or maybe they'll have specific customization restrictions on them. Hopefully, it's not too restricted. If it is that way. Because um, obviously a big part of Need for Speed is customization and I won't want too many cars to be restricted in that way. And then it goes on to say now for the fun part where you turn it up a notch and take a stock ride into something spectacular. Visually customize your ride to get it looking just how you want. And your garage has never looked better but deep down we know it's what's under the hood that counts. Win and buy the hottest aftermarket parts and craft the perfect driving machine. Keep your eyes peeled while exploring Fortune Valley and you might just find an abandoned car that becomes your new project. Breathe life into it and raise it from scrap into your one of a kind supercar. So that pretty much confirms it will be able to take a car, customize it into a certain way and obviously drive it about. So it's sort of like the barn finds and Forza, but I believe a bit more intense and a bit more interactive. So obviously we've got more intense cops now, even helicopters joining the chase, how they're going to act fair in them, whether they'll be able to like use an EMP gun on you like in Fast and Too Fast and Furious, that'll be pretty interesting. Um, we've got rhinos, which are just those savage, just ridiculously beefy trucks that come and ram you and destroy you and run you off the road. They might get pretty annoying or they might be pretty fun. I don't know. We'll see how that turns out. So it also says double down and risk to run up your rewards. Now speed and style moments to bank extra rep and shrink together heaters for massive multipliers. So I believe the perfect moment stuff has gone. They're just saying speed and style. So you haven't got outlaw and like specific stuff like that that we had in Need for Speed 2015. It's just speed and style in this one. Hopefully it's still prominent and we can still get tons of points from it and earn rep and have it a bit like pretty interesting. I love the way they had it in Need for Speed 15 with the multiplier and you get more rep for doing more things. I love the way that worked. Hopefully they bring that back in some way. 
So it says also up the ante for side bets, challenges that raise the stakes in races, win the race and win side bets to multiply your bank. So maybe if we go to into a race, it says do 15 near misses and it'll just help get you a bigger payout at the end of the race. That'd be pretty interesting. Or maybe do some like a number, certain number of drifts or getting a certain amount of drift score or something like that. And then it goes on to say, think you're the fastest and willing to put your reputation on the line. An all new auto log pushes your friend's best scores from the entire campaign and open world activities. Bragging rights are always at stake and only a button press away. Now, this was something that I mentioned in my discussion video where we have some prominent leaderboards. So auto log is coming back from rivals, I believe the last time we saw it. So this will be coming back and obviously you'll be able to see people's ranks and stuff. Hopefully it glorifies some players so it will bring sort of esports into it, for example. You know, like the top Call of Duty plays like Phase and Optic and that sort of stuff. So it'd be cool if we had like a player card at the top where we had like, you could see the car and maybe the custom character if that's going to be a thing in multiplayer. We haven't seen anything from multiplayer yet. They're not really talking about it too much in this. Um, but that'd be pretty interesting. Having some interactive leaderboards, maybe where we can challenge other people as well if they're in like a rank above us. We can do something competitive where we race against them. Or maybe it'll just be like ghosted cars and ghosted times where we have to try and beat those times and, and blah de blah. Moving on, it also says all Need for Speed Payback pre-orders receive the Platinum car back, instantly giving you access to five uniquely customized and tuned cars, each with exclusive Platinum blue tire smoke. Blue tire smoke cars include the Nissan 350Z, Chevy Camaro SS, Ford F-150 Raptor, and the Volkswagen Golf GTI Club Sport. A nice variety of cars there. The GTI Club Sport, um, a hatchback coming into the game. We didn't have too many hatchbacks in 2015. That would be pretty interesting to drive around. The 350Z, something a lot of you guys asked for. But obviously, they've got it in this platinum car back, so you'll have to probably pay a bit more um, pre ordering this to actually get this car. So, a bit of a cheeky one from Need for Speed. And it also says pre order the deluxe edition to play Need for Speed Payback on November 7th, a three day head start. You'll also receive exclusive NAS color. Um, so, when they say exclusive NAS color, whether you'd just be able to create this in game yourself or maybe they've restricted certain colors in a way so that you maybe have to unlock colors so you don't have full control over what actual colors you have. Hopefully it's not too restrictive and we can just have access to a lot of colors from the start anyway. Um, we've also got exclusive license plate, leaderboard icons, which is interesting. So we'll have maybe different icons depending on our ranking leaderboards and the different things we do in game depending on what sort of I don't know, maybe if you get too many, too much near misses or drift points or something like that, you might have a different icon. Um, it could be, depends on where you are in campaign, how well you're doing multiplayer. There's just so many things you can speculate. Um, let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment section, what these leaderboard icons might be. And we've also got a story mission pack. So it looks like there's going to be some sort of expansions as DLC to add onto the story as well. Um, and it says you'll also be able to play Need for Speed Payback on PS4, Xbox One, PC, via origin you'll find the full release timings below so we've got november 2nd for ea access and our origin access members to play the first trial and um, we've got november 7th if you pre-order the needs to be deluxe edition and november 10th on the worldwide release so if you're on xbox or you're on a pc and you've got origin um, or ea access on xbox you'll get it pretty much seven to eight days earlier than the actual release of the full game that is so exciting i cannot wait for this i know this breakdown has been quite a lengthy one i hope you guys have enjoyed it remember to subscribe to see the gameplay as soon as it comes from ea play i'll be there in la recording it just before e3 and i'll be putting it on my channel while i'm there anyway guys that's pretty much all for this video thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next one